Vitality is our ability to have spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical bliss. Some call it paradise. We call it a game. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So we talking about why your man left you. Why, why, did, your man leave, why did your man leave you, especially for that other woman? And a lot of times women think when men leave, they are leaving because she was prettier or they were leaving because she was better in bed than they were or, you know, some other type of superficial reason why. And nine times out of 10, men aren't leaving one woman for the other woman for those reasons. Um, so I got a real quick video to share with you guys. And then I'm going to be back with my perspective. We're going to talk about why these men actually leave these relationships. So real quick, let me go ahead and share my screen. Here we go. For someone who's prettier, they leave you for someone who's easier. All right, 100%. First of all, let's acknowledge the fact that women mostly, for the most part, no, you can't say all women. For the most part, women will stay in a relationship until she finds another man to take that place. This is how it is. Not a lot of women go single. They sit there and they relationship hop. So, ladies, let's get you out of the way. Other one, uh, the other aspect of it, yeah, guys, we're not going to leave you for a woman who's better in bed, who uh, just prettier, who's whatever you think of it is. What does she have that I don't? We leave you because we're simple for a woman who is just easier to be with. That's it. A woman who lets us be us. A woman who lets us flow, who doesn't constantly complain, bitch, moan, nag about who we are, that's the reason why we wind up gravitating towards someone else's attention. A woman who makes our life easier is ultimately the one that we'll leave you for. Take that for what it's worth. Okay. So you heard that, and it was really straightforward, and it was really quite simple. And a lot of times women think, that men are leaving again for superficial reasons and they're not. They're not. This is why sometimes you'll turn around and your ex guy will be with another woman that actually doesn't look better than you. She physically, she's not better than you. Okay. And a lot of women will be thinking, well, why did he downgrade? Actually, he didn't downgrade. He upgraded. He upgraded. He ticked off more boxes with her than he ever ticked off with you. And that's the reality of it. This is how you see men who you like, oh, he fine, he this, he that. And then you look at his woman and you're like, she not quite as fine as I know that man can get. I know it's some fine chicks want that man. And they do. They do want him. And he's had them. He's had them. If, if you see a real super fly dude with a wife that ain't like a 10, but he love her, understand that all them tens he left behind he left them for a reason they ten ism wasn't enough to keep him her being fine wasn't quite enough because she was fine but the reality is she wasn't easy to be be with she wasn't easy to be with when he got away from just her beauty and and how she looked and how she smelled and how she sat and all of this type of stuff. When he kind of got away from that a little bit and began to think about the mechanics of the relationship. How was this relationship actually going to work? How has it been working? Is it easy to be with this woman? Yeah, she fine. And that's why I'm over here because she is fine. I'm hoping it could be easy, but I don't know. And the thing about it is, her being fine, her having a, you know, a lot of TNA and this, that, and the third, it was okay. It got her in the door. It got him to deal with her probably longer than he would have had she not been pretty. 
That's the reality of it. Men will put up with a lot of junk from a real pretty girl. She can be real crappy for longer than like an average chick can be crappy. Average chicks can't be crappy at all. Like average chicks got to be perfect. But uh, a pretty chick, she can be kind of a piece of crap and he'll deal with her longer. However, if he's looking for something real or if he's dealing with the real fine chick and that kind of midway, you know, average, she not a 10, but she's an adjustable seven. She, you know, she got a cute little face. No, she got a cute little body. She not a 10. However, this is the main difference. It's easy for him to implement the four Ps with that, with that non-10. It's, it's easier for him to do this. And he'll leave that 10 for her. Because see, the 10 is giving him pushback in one, two, three, and four. She being masculine in these areas, okay? And that other woman that's easier to deal with, this is what men are talking about when he says she's easier. And then let's take provision. Provision says he produces masculine light, giving him the ability to look ahead and or prepare in advance. He generates stability in the form of ideas, supplies, food, finances, clothing, and housing. How does the non-10 woman beat the 10 out of this? Because the 10 typically take that for granted. Because men are rushing to give that to her. Men are running to give her whatever he got, his money. He'll share his status with her. He'll share it. Whatever he got, he's willing and ready. And, you know, he's, he's eager to share these things with her off the basis of her beauty. So when you are constantly getting something given to you without doing a lot of work for it, you have a tendency to take that thing for granted. Oh, he's going to give it to me anyway. But see, that other woman that's easier for him to deal with actually shows appreciation for that. She actually shows appreciation for his masculine energy that he's bringing, his masculine light that he's bringing to her, the attention that he's giving her any money that he might give her, any provision that he might actually make for her, she's actually showing him that she appreciates that and that she's not taking it for granted, that she actually values the intangible things that he brings to the table as well as the tangible things that he brings to the table. How else does she do it? In the problem-solving area. See, that super fine chick that don't check no boxes Okay, and I'm saying super fine because women think that men leave women for that reason and they don't. So I'm telling you how sometimes a super fine chick actually lose to a chick that don't look as good as her. Okay, it's because this other woman in the problem solving area, she actually submits to him. She actually submits to him. See, that super fine chick that get male attention just because she's breathing, that gets male attention just because she's breathing, she don't need, she does not accept really any problem solving from him, okay? Because as far as she's concerned, she's not having any problems. What, the, what one man won't do, another man will. And she's been able to find that other man, that other man will do whatever this other man ain't doing for her to her satisfaction. Because she has this beauty, she can go and actually get another man that, that will potentially do this stuff for her. So she'll question what he's talking about just for questions sake. This is how you actually push back on problem solving or not submit with problem solving. You constantly question his reasons and you rearrange his solutions. He give you a solution to a problem, you rearrange it. You tweak it to however you see fit. And you question him for the sake of questioning him. Now, question, asking questions of him at, when he has solved a problem or is giving you solutions, if you ask questions for the sake of clarity so that you can actually implement the, these solutions properly, that is reasonable. He's not seeing that as a challenge to his problem solving ability. That's not, he's not seeing that as a form of, of insubordination or potential mutiny from you. He, he's just, he's understanding, okay, she's trying to understand my resolution so that she can actually implement it so she can submit to it. Okay, because you can't really submit and do stuff with things you don't understand. 
So if you're asking for clarity, that is different. Men aren't stupid, but they do understand when you're asking for the sake of challenging him. You're asking questions for the sake of the questioning. And sometimes you're being passive aggressive about it. Oh, that you really think that what? Oh, you really? I mean, are you really thinking that's gonna work? I mean, if you say so, I mean, I don't know. That kind of crap. Okay. That's actually entering into masculine energy because you're challenging his problem solving ability as if you can match it or you have better than him. That is not submission. And that's actually non-masculine. Men do that, we'll do that with each other. Dude, I don't need your help with that. I mean, I got this. I mean, I got it. You know what I mean? A man will say that to another man. Man, I can problem solve on my own is what he's saying. I got this. Okay? You give pushback in the protection. And we've covered this so many times. Like, you remove the cover of his protection. So along with submission for problem solving, you need to allow yourself to be under his control for protection. And when I say under his control, I simply mean that you allow his influence to be more over you or resonate more with you than any outside external influence does. He needs to have control over circumstances and over environments, right? Because he's responsible for you. So he needs to be able to have some type of jurisdiction over the environments or at least how you present in certain environments or whether you can go into certain environments because those things may or may not harm you or corrupt you. And if you get corrupted out there, you bring that home and corrupt the relationship because above all, he's protecting you personally. He's protecting him, but he's also protecting the integrity of the relationship. That's what he's really protecting. And he's having to protect it from outside external influences because he's not the only one in this relationship. He's in a relationship with you, right? And then lastly, but not least, procreation is stifled because you're not easy there either. You attempt to control it. Anything from the sex it's itself to the love, the affection, the connection to what you might be doing with the children in terms of raising them to his satisfaction or not. There's a constant tug of war there right? There's a constant power struggle that is created and power struggles create tension. Tension lead to more stress and bigger issues. And tension in the procreation part is actually the least tolerable because it's the most apparent and it's the most high, it's the high, it's the uh, one with the highest stress level attached to it because there's stress in a place where stress relief should be. And instead of stress relief, he finds tension here because you're withholding sex or, or you are, you know, you're attempting to control the connection and the love and the affection within the relationship and whether or not he could connect with you and all these other types of things. You're accepting other attention from other men. It could be an assortment of reasons why procreation is problematic here. And this can kind of go back to the pretty woman. She's getting and accepting sexual attention from other men, even if she's not having sex. That's tension in the procreation department because how she takes her man's affection for granted because I can get this from anywhere else. The other woman that's easier to deal with is actually appreciative of his attention because it might not come as easily to her from other men. And, and in point of fact, she doesn't want it from other men. She only wants it from her man. She only wants it from her husband. So in short, men dislike power struggles and they disengage when there is a constant pushback against what comes naturally to him, which is giving provision, problem solving, protection, and procreation. If you want to be less feminine, give him trouble in those areas. If you want to be more feminine, don't give him trouble in those areas. Be easy in those areas. He appreciates it more. He feels wanted, needed, loved, and as and he feels like his masculinity is a positive contribution to the relationship and to the family, that he's helped by it, that you're helped by it, and that overall the relationship is created and made better through it. All right. 
So sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.